Lesson 6 for January 30 to February 5. Playing God and read by Dr. Percy Harold. Friday, February 5. From Manuscript Releases, Volume 5, page 32, we read, Is it by conditions that we receive salvation, never by conditions that we come to Christ? And if we come to Christ, then what is the condition? The condition is that by living faith we lay hold wholly and entirely upon the merits of the blood of a crucified and risen Saviour. When we do that, then we work the works of righteousness. But when God is calling the sinner in our world and inviting him, there is no condition there. He draws by the invitation of Christ, and it is not. Now you have got to respond in order to come to the cross. The sinner comes, and as he comes, and views Christ elevated upon that cross of Calvary, which God impresses upon his mind, there is a love beyond anything that is imagined that he has taken hold of. And that brings us to our three discussion questions for this week. 1. Look at the above quote from Ellen G. White. Read it in the context of Wednesday's study. What is she telling us there? Notice in her statement both elements of the Christian walk, faith and then works. How does she differentiate between them? 2. Why are pride and arrogance such dangerous sins? Why are they so hard to put away? Can it be because by their very nature they blind people to their need to put them away? After all, if you are proud, you think you're okay. And if you think you are okay... Why bother changing? How can dwelling on the cross and what it represents, the only means of saving anyone, be a powerful cure for pride and arrogance in anyone? And three, does Isaiah see hope for people of other nations? For example, Isaiah 25 verse 3, Therefore the strong people will glorify you, the city of the terrible nations will fear you. Isaiah 25, verse 6, And in this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of well-refined wines on the lees. And Isaiah 26, and verse 9, With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. And we compare that with Revelation 19, verse 9. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And so to summarise this week's lesson, Isaiah saw that following Assyria, Babylon would conquer Judah. But he also saw that in spite of superhuman rulers of the darkness of this world, as explained in Ephesians 6.12, working through God's human enemies and presuming to play God, the Lord would decisively prevail and bring eternal peace to our troubled planet. And so we finish with Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Inside Story Our mission story this week is titled Missing Commandment and it's by Andrew McChesney of Adventist Mission. Valentina Schlee was astounded when her older sister Galena announced that they were not keeping all of the Ten Commandments in their hometown in northern Kazakhstan. Valentina opened her Bible and read through the commandments. When she reached the fourth, she stopped. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. She read in Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates. 
For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. She and Galena resolved to find a church that observed the seventh day Sabbath. But where should they look? Let's do it like this, Valentina told Galena. If the Bible is really the true word of God, there must be a church that follows all ten commandments. Let's pray about it. The sisters prayed for three months. If there is a church that keeps all the commandments, please lead us to it, Valentina prayed. One day, Valentina felt an irresistible urge to visit Nellie, a relative. She didn't know what came over her. Usually, she stayed at home all day with her two-year-old son. At Nellie's house, Valentina and Nellie were talking when another relative, Olga, rang the doorbell. Olga was not a close relative. In fact, Valentina had heard that she had joined a dangerous sect called the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In the house, Olga didn't mince words. "'What do you think about God?' she asked Valentina. Valentina ignored the question and asked one of her own. "'Do you keep all the commandments?' she said. "'Do you keep the Seventh-day Sabbath?' Hours later, Valentina informed Galena that the Seventh-day Adventist Church observes all Ten Commandments. Several months later, the sisters were baptised together. Through the Holy Word, God led us to the church that keeps all Ten Commandments, Valentina said. And there's a photograph of Valentina here as well. Part of the 2017 13 Sabbath offering helped open one of the first Seventh-day Adventist preschools in Valentina's hometown, Pavlodar, in Kazakhstan. Hi there. Thanks for watching this video on the Advent Band Ministries YouTube channel. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to be alerted whenever we upload new videos. So, until we meet him in the clouds, may God continue to bless you. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. It's supported by the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel Australia and is rebroadcast by Christian Record Services and through podcasts at It Is Written in the United States, Hope Channel Germany and through Apple iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember, God is always faithful.